Conrad Steiner, Doctor of Medicine. Tonight's story has the title, The Inconstant Heart. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. Our actual case history tonight concerns the field of radiology. The object in point, the chessboard. The case in point, Richard C. Forbes, married, father of two children, a boy and a girl. By occupation, he's a draftsman for a small firm of architects. All his life, Richard Forbes has been physically handicapped, a condition which he tolerated cheerfully and without complaint. But now in his 37th year, although he doesn't realize it, Richard Forbes is a very sick man. When Daddy comes home, can I go out and play? We'll see, we'll see. There he is now. Here, Jim. Here. You take this out to him. I'll be right along. It won't be a minute. All right. Now, be careful. Don't spill it now. I shall personally recommend you for the round table. Can you make it now? I've got the oxygen already. Sure, sure, I can make it. Easy now. Lean on me. What's all the fuss? This isn't the first time, won't be the last. That's just it. Great stuff. Want a whiff? That's the third tank this week. Oh? I thought it was only two. That's what it used to be. Before that, it was only one. Well, it's just a spell. Weather or something. It'll pass. Dick. Mm-hmm? I, I, I want to call a doctor. Oh, no, honey. What's the use of going through all that again? What's the harm? Just to ask. But there's nothing they can do. You know it, and I know it. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times. When was the last time you heard it? It is a long time ago, but not long enough. Maybe there is something they can do. They're always finding something new. I was talking to Kate Dunham only yesterday, and she said that... That she... bird brain. Her advice we really need. But her husband is a doctor. Not my doctor. No. No, I mean doctor. Nurse June, I've watched over you for ten years. And I don't want to lose a patient. Especially when I happen to be married to him. dinner tonight. Dick? Mm-hmm? Can we talk a little? Why, sure. What about? You? Me? And our friends, the doctors, I suppose. No, oh, no, not necessarily. Just facts. Oh, honey, I wish you wouldn't worry so. Oh, how can I help it? A year ago, you had your work cut down to part-time. Now it's only half-time. You can barely manage that. Well, we're getting by, aren't we? Oh, it isn't that, Dick. It's you. 
You've gotten worse, a lot worse. Now look, honey. We faced all this a long time ago, way back before we were married, remember? You know, I didn't want to marry you. And I took advantage of your weakened condition and dragged you to the altar. But we knew what I had, and we knew nothing could be done about it. We knew that I probably couldn't expect to live as long as other people. And when we finally decided, well, we've made up our minds to just forget about it. To go ahead and have our family and try to live like any other normal people. And if anything was going to happen, well, it would just happen. We decided to be happy in spite of that. I've been very happy, Dottie. Most of the time, I can manage to feel like the Austrian general who said the situation is hopeless but not serious. But to have a parade of pious sawbones coming around telling me just how hopeless it really is... No, Dottie, no. Maybe they wouldn't say that now. Don't you see, Dick? Just once more. If you, if you won't do it for yourself, do it for us. You've got two children and, and another one. Say, hey, how is the latest? I haven't thought to ask all day. Fine. I guess. What do you mean? I haven't been feeling too well lately. Well, have you been to the doctor? No, I haven't felt up to it. Well, then have him out here for the love of Mike. If there's anything, Dottie, anything at all. Yes. Maybe I should. Maybe that's what I ought to do. Watch that diet, do you hear? Oh, I will, all right. How is she? Oh, fine, just fine. <sighs> Dr. Stevens, this is my husband. How do you do, Doctor? Hello. Excuse me for not getting up. Sure. I was just going through a game here between uh, Lasky and Voronov. Havana, 1920. Went nine hours to a drawn game. Oh, you play chess? Some. <laughs> yes, yes, I remember. Voronov was quite conservative. One reason why he was good, of course. Do you mind? Go ahead. Hmm. That's not the way Voronov played it. <laughs> there have been changes in a lot of things since 1920, Mr. Forbes. Would you like to start a game? Fine. Have you got the time? Well, <laughs> if it doesn't go nine hours to a draw. <laughs> if you two will excuse me, I, I got things to do. Oh, of course. <laughs> Mr. Forbes, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Oh, come on now, Doctor. I can smell a setup as well as the next guy. My wife's been after you to look at me. And if she went that far, she's told you how I feel about it. So, now you've seen me. So, everybody's happy. So, you still want to play chess? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm not going to strap you down and amputate. Put it down to professional curiosity. Do you mind so much? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. But if it'll make you feel better, Doctor. You know, I can tell you as much as... You know, I can tell you as much as you'll hear through one of those things. Multiple defects of the heart. Leaky heart, they used to call it. Not enough blood gets to the pulmonary artery and into the lungs. Result, not enough oxygen. Result? Could be that. Could be a couple of other things, too. Oh, sure, I know. I've heard them all. <laughs> but they all add up to the same answer. Uh, uh, do you mind? Go ahead. There isn't one blessed thing you or anybody else can do about it. Who told you that, Mr. Forbes? Every doctor I've ever seen. They were right, of course. Sure they were right. Right as rain, except for one thing. 
They told my folks I wouldn't live past the age of seven, but I'm still here. And you know something? Quite a few of them aren't. <laughs> Time does catch up with the best of us. Did anybody ever tell you that as you grew older, certain physical reactions would take place that will tend to aggravate your condition? It's been mentioned, yes. You see, all these years, your body's been trying to compensate, trying to help you out. It's been manufacturing more and more red blood cells in order to bring oxygen to the tissues. By this time, your red blood cells are literally so thick that your heart is having a harder and harder time pumping it through your system. You follow? Look, doctor, you've said it. I know it. It's something I was born with. There's nothing to be done about it. Let's leave it at that, shall we? I said your doctors were right in telling you that. And they were. At the time. I don't suppose you have time or inclination to read medical journals. There have been some pretty important advances made recently. Last two years. Take radiology, for example. You mean x-ray, stuff like that? X-rays are only a small part of it. It's becoming a tremendous field, actually. You know, Doctor, if you're going to try to tell me that taking x-rays can do something for my heart, I'm going to suspect you're looking for a fee. And I suppose I'll have to tell you free of charge. Recent techniques in the field of medicine and radiology have made it not only possible, but very probable, that a condition such as yours can be permanently corrected. You think so? I think so. And I better tell you something else. Unless something is done, at your present rate of deterioration, my guess is you won't last a year. Possibly 18 months. All right, your move. Hmm? Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin. Look, I've lived with this thing for a long time. And I quit hoping years ago. I had to. I didn't dare to hope. I don't dare to even now. Well, why don't we hear what Dr. Santana has to say, Dick? It's going to be one of those ten-to-one shots, Doctor. It's no go. I'd rather take my chances on the 18 months or whatever it is you say I've got left. I've gone along that way so far, and I've been pretty lucky. I don't want to play Russian roulette on some operating table. Dick. I understand your point of view perfectly, Mr. Forbes. If I'd had your experience, I think I'd feel the same way. How about as a starter, would you like to look around the shop? Yes, I would. Well, if you folks will excuse me, I'll check with you later, Doctor. Right. Dr. Stevens? Thanks. I'll check with you, too. And so, through his skeptic's eyes, Richard Forbes first sees the field of modern radiology. The so-called seeds and needles containing minute quantities of radioactive substances which can be introduced directly into diseased tissue. The atomic medicines used both in treatment and as diagnostic tracer agents. X-ray machine capable of penetrating to deep-seated areas of malignancy. The impressive cobalt bomb, employing radioactive cobalt and sometimes used to supplement deep X-ray treatment. side, he sees the many and varied applications of radiological detection. The scintiscaler used to check the function of the thyroid gland, operating like a Geiger counter to record the size and condition of the thyroid gland. And most important of all, to the health and life of Richard Forbes, a comparative infant in the fast-growing family of radiology, angiocardiography. Have a seat, please.
to tell you exactly what we propose to do in your case and why we propose to do it. The reason the doctors told you they couldn't do anything for you when you were younger was that they didn't dare to try. They knew that you had, that you were born with, what you've called a leaky heart. But they couldn't be sure of the exact extent or location of the defect. There's quite a variety of them, you know. Yes, I know. An operation on the human heart is a serious business under any circumstances. If a doctor had to go in and poke around, not knowing what he was going to find or where he was going to find it, the odds were just too great. Loss of blood, shock. He couldn't take the chance. What was needed, and you'll understand this, you're a draftsman, what was needed was an exact blueprint of the heart before surgery. That way, we'd be better acquainted with the exact nature and exact location of the abnormality. X-ray? No. Old-style X-ray wouldn't do anything for us. The heart, after all, is tissue like any other, only shows up as a shadow. And as for seeing small defects, perhaps not as big around as a lead pencil, it was out of the question. So we had to find a way to introduce something into the heart, something that would show up on X-ray and tell us what we wanted to know. Now, the heart is one organ of the human body that you just can't go sticking needles into, that's for sure. Carefully and painstakingly, Dr. Santana explains to the patient and his wife the diagnostic technique of angiocardiography, a procedure which has greatly increased the accuracy of diagnosis where surgery of the heart is indicated. So, that's what we want to do to you. Well, I, I guess we'll just have to buy it, huh? At 7.30 a.m. the following Wednesday, Richard Forbes is scheduled for angiocardiography. Present are Drs. Stevens and Santana, Dr. Finlay Carter, a cardiologist, an attending nurse, an x-ray technician. A local anesthetic has been administered. The field is the middle left arm. No general anesthetic is needed. The patient will be conscious during the entire course of the operation. Feel anything? Not a thing. Bet you a dollar cigar you won't from now on, either. Oh, I meant a lot to smoke, remember? Better take him up on it. Maybe you will be by the time we get through. One of the cubital veins is dissected free for about an inch and a half of its length. It is tied off at the far end and a small opening is made in the vein. inserted a plastic tube, a catheter. upward through the veins. The catheter is under constant observation fluoroscopically. That's it. Right. It is passing through the axillary vein in the upper arm, entering the subclavian in the shoulder. The catheter is entering the superior vena cava, the great venous channel directly above the heart, into which all the veins in the upper half of the body eventually empty. All right, a little more. The catheter has entered the right atrium, first of the four chambers of the heart. It will be kept there throughout the remainder of the examination. That's it. Perfect. 
What's the score, Doctor? We just stuck that little tube into your heart, that's all. Wouldn't have believed it. Like to have a look? Yeah. It'll be a little fuzzy from where you are, but have a look. Say, how about that? First, a minute sample of the contrast medium is used to make an allergy test. Any abnormal reaction of the heart is an urgent sign of danger. A contrast medium opaque to x-ray will be introduced through the catheter, directly into the heart. Its passage through the chambers of the heart will be photographed by high-speed x-ray. mechanism exposes x-ray film at the rate of 12 a second. It'll sound a little like a machine gun when it goes off, so I don't want to scare you. All right. Instrument table, please. in about four hours, and then we'll know the score. What about that little tube of yours, Doctor? Don't you want it back, or do I get to keep it? Already got it. It seems so easy, and yet, all those years. Come in. Morning, Doctor. Morning. Forbes. Forbes, how do you feel? Well, it all depends, Doctor. How does our scorecard read? Mm, pretty good. Here, take a look at it. This is the pulmonary valve right here, which leads from the heart to the lungs. Now, here's the cause of your trouble right here at these two points. It's referred to as pulmonary valvular stenosis. Mm -hmm. There's a constriction at the valve, hindering the flow of blood to the lungs. There's also this septal defect right here. Mm -hmm. I see. Tell me, doctor. If I take a chance on this surgery, what are the odds? Hmm. Well, I don't like to talk about odds. It makes me sound like a horse player. <laughs> Heart operation's always serious. But from what we know now, I'd say your chances are good. Very good. And if I don't take a chance on this surgery? Well, I think we talked about that before. All right, doctor. Let's get the show on the road. So once again, Richard Forbes goes into surgery. But this time, it isn't just a little incision in his arm. The surgery is major, his heart. A few years ago, it wouldn't even have been attempted. By tomorrow, there's a good possibility he will be a completely normal individual. First day of true health he has ever known in his life. turned out fine. In fact, it couldn't be better. Well, I think tomorrow you'd better come in and see me. 